All right, I wanted to do a video on installing a distributor into your engine block. Um, I was reading a forum online. People were talking about distributors and someone mentioned that it took them three days to get their distributor back into their engine. Um, I thought I would go over quickly the process that I take and um, um, share it with you guys. Now, before we get into it, you got to understand that a four-stroke engine, which these engines that we're working on are four-strokes, um, that refers to the four strokes of the piston, and they typically start at the intake where the piston's at top dead center. The intake is the first stroke. Then the compression is the second stroke. The explosion is the third stroke. And the exhaust is the fourth stroke. The reason that it's important to understand that is because that during one cycle of the um, four-stroke engine, the um, piston is at top dead center two times. So it's at top dead center on the exhaust stroke just before it does the intake stroke, and it's back at top dead center again when it's on the compression stroke and it gets the explosion. So the reason that's important is because sometimes people will just set their uh, mark, timing mark on their harmonic balancer to top dead center. They'll drop in their distributor and when they go to fire it, they find out that they are what's referred to as 180 degrees off. It's because they did not get it on the right stroke. So the way that I go about doing that, it's, I remove the number one, um, number one spark plug. On GM engines, um, Number one spark plug is always going to be the uh, driver's side head forward most by the radiator. And if there's any question, you can always look down. I'll try to move my camera here, but they'll be marked one, three, five, and seven on the intake runners. Um, but like I said, GM engines typically, um, or always, um, driver's side head forward most towards the radiator and what I do is I remove the spark plug I stick my finger in the hole and I turn the engine over usually it's with a remote starter but this one's kind of easier so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to crank the engine over and I'm going to feel you know sometimes I'll feel that my finger gets sucked into the hole and that's on the intake stroke and then I'll feel the pressure of it trying to push my finger out. That's the compression stroke. And as that compression stroke is happening, I would be looking at the um, timing marks on the uh, harmonic balancer and it should be coming up towards top dead center. So I'll show you what I'll, I'll do here and you can hear, you'll hear a puff, 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 puff. And that puff is pushing the air out um, aside my finger here in the number one cylinder hole. So what I'll do is I'm going to go off camera for a second. I'm going to get this uh, engine lined up to top dead center on a compression stroke. Then I'll turn it back on and we'll go ahead and uh, set the distributor in the hole. I'll take a photo of it lined up on top dead center um, of the compression stroke so you can see what you're looking for. And then we'll set the uh, distributor in the hole. All right, off camera, I went ahead I stuck my finger in the number one cylinder, turned the engine over while looking at the marks on the harmonic balancer, and it's set at top dead center. Now, when we look at our distributor, um, one thing that we have to realize is that the gears are cut in a helical manner. So as they fall into the hole and they interact with the gears on the camshaft, it's going to turn the rotor up here. I'm going to go ahead and put the rotor on, and for those of you that may not know, on the um, mounting tab where the rotor mounts, there's a little little notch or um, nipple that sticks out there, and that fits into the notch in the cap. So that's so that the cap can only go on one way. I'm sorry, the rotor can only go on one way. I'm going to set that down. 
And then, you know, what I do is um, on small block Chevys, I know that the vacuum canister is over here near the number eight cylinder. Um, you always, you can't, just because you pulled it out and the vacuum canister was someplace, that's not always where it should go. It really can go anywhere, but usually it's set from the factory in an area where it has enough um, swing so that it can retard or advance the timing. Um, I always will check a manual because many times it will show where the vacuum advance canister is in relationship to the um, engine block and it will also show where the number one spark plug wire typically goes. Those, they can be changed. I try to stick with what was uh, came from the factory because they usually engineered it for a reason. Um, I went to the manual on this particular engine and it did not have where the, um, where the um, vacuum canister went. However, it did show me that the number one spark plug hole, a spark plug terminal is right here, kind of right off, you know, the front of the engine on this front left side, front driver's side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm kind of kind of orient the um well first what I'm gonna do is on the on the cap there's a little block in here right here and that little block of plastic goes into this notch on the housing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that notch into the house. I'm going to put that notch into the housing where it blocked in. And then I'm going to mark the number one um, terminal. So that's the number one terminal. And I'm going to follow it down and I'm going to mark the housing in the middle of the housing. So that's our number one um, spark plug uh, terminal. The reason that's important is because we need to take the cap off to install it. And once it's installed, um, you know, this location is where the rotor is going to fire. So as the rotor is coming around clockwise, it's going to hit that terminal and that's where it's going to fire. So now I've already got a gasket in the hole. I'm going to go ahead and set that in the hole. And first of all, I forgot to show you guys one thing. Also on the bottom of this gear, there's a, a square piece of metal that runs across here. That piece of metal um, goes into the... Uh, oil pump drive shaft rod and if you look down the hole I'll sh show you a picture of it there is a um, drive shaft and it has a notch in it so we got to get that lined up but we can turn that drive shaft with a screwdriver so first what I want to do is I want to come around here and I just want to get a sense of where I want my vacuum canister to be <clears throat> So my vacuum canister can be from here to someplace in here. <laughs> and that thing that thing landed in the hole. It went all the way down. Doesn't happen all the time. It's still not right. I'll show you why here in a second. Let me show you with the camera. I'm going to try to move this a little forward. And I'm going to come down with it. So... You can't tell, I don't think, from the video, but, um, well, so right there is firing. That would be top dead center, and we are lined up with that mark. What I need to do is I need to come around and see how much swing we have with our uh, vacuum canister because we want to fire... Six, I'm sorry, 15 degrees, 16 degrees before top dead center. So what we want to do is this mark right here, that is the firing mark on the housing. That's where the terminal is going to line up. And we need to be able to have this fire 
as this is coming around 16 degrees before top dead center. And I believe that we have it where uh, this thing fell in. And um, I kind of don't like that it fell in and didn't give us the opportunity to mess with it a little bit. So I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna show you what would happen if we we messed up this gear, this drive shaft down here. I'm gonna turn it and I just moved it around a little bit and we're gonna set this thing in there. Again, we wanna have our uh, vacuum canister kind of where it's gonna go. And you can see that's not gonna fall down in there. And the reason it's not falling down in is because the um, uh, it's not lining up with that uh, notch in the drive shaft. So the notch in the the receiving the, the notch in the um, distributor it lines up with this with this uh, uh, electrode on the rotor. So I'm going to. Put my flashlight down there, take a look, turn that drive shaft rod to where it seems about right, set this back down in there, get my vacuum advance can kind of where I want it. I know that I'm going to have to, this is going to slide into those hel helical gears. Uh, it did not go in yet. And there we go, it fell right in. So I messed that up so we could have an opportunity to do it. But we have this much travel now, so I can uh, retard it or I can advance it. Right now that would be firing at top dead center with this lined up on our reference mark. As we pull it forward, as we move the housing forward, this thing would have fired back here as it was coming around. So that would be advanced and this would be retarded. And it looks like we have the ability to retard it more than we have to advance it. So I think I'm actually, uh, I wanna try and see what it would look like if we pulled it back one, two. So I'm gonna back up the I'm gonna back up the um, notch just a hair, about one tooth. I'm gonna set it back down. Again, get our advanced can kind of where we want it. And there we fell back in. And it's the same situation, so I didn't back it up enough. There we go. So now it fell in. I actually did it the wrong way because now we're hitting top dead center. We'd be firing there. So I think I backed it up the wrong way. Knocked off my gasket. Probably should have left it where it was at to begin with. So I'm gonna back it up again. But you can see how by adjusting the, um, 
the drive shaft here you can get you can change it by one tooth if you like and Yeah, so that's where I like it best. Because here, as that thing comes, it's right in the middle of its swing, pretty much. And I'm most likely gonna have it set up something like this, so that as this thing is moving counterclockwise, the crank is at top dead center at this location, but it's going to be firing on this pin over here. So it's going to be firing on that pin right there and um, when I pull it off you can see that it's already past it so at top dead center on the crank um, it's past the number one spark plug terminal if it were hitting the number one spark plug terminal it would be advanced and it would probably be about 16 15 degrees right now so this is the way that I'm going to leave this distributor and I believe that once we get this thing into the the car it's going to line up perfectly and it's going to uh, it's going to be ready to run. So that's how you drop your distributor in. I hope you guys learned something, you like it, enjoy it. Um, you know, click like, share, subscribe and um, I'll be posting more videos on uh, tuning, drivability, uh, distributor curving, uh, if that's something that uh, interests you, uh, subscribe to my channels. Thank you.